In today's video, we're here with Patrick Adair in his studio, and we're gonna be making a cool ring out of a brass hex nut. Guys, we're here with Patrick Adair in his studio. Patrick, what do you do? I make rings, I make rings out of everything. Very cool. We've done a collaboration with Patrick before where we used brass from some bullet casings and some meteorite that you provided. We melted those down, added them together, and you then made a video where you showed turning that into this ring. So this ring, brass on the outside with meteorite in it. It's got carbon fiber on the inside. Fits me wonderfully. Very cool ring. Today we're gonna to try something a little bit simpler. Yes, I think it would be a lot of fun to make something out of a brass hex nut. And it's kind of a fun project that I think a lot of people would be able to do from home. So that's gonna be kind of the goal. You don't have to have meteorite. You don't, you don't have to have meteorite. carbon fiber. You don't even need a lathe if you've got time. All so right, very cool. That's, that's all you need. Some basic hand tools, time, and uh, preferably a lathe if you got one. But like, if, if you have one, you have one. I don't own one. I think we're gonna show both versions, like an all hand tools yeah. version, and then a, a bit more advanced power tools version. So we've got three different sizes of our brass hex nut here. And you were showing me a few different designs. And what I think I was hoping for was something that looks kind of like a signet ring, which yes. means it has like one flat facet on the top and then mm -hmm. the rest just kind of gets smoothed out. Yeah, exactly. Right. So to do that, we'll just throw it in a vise. We'll use a file to round off all of the edges except for these top two, so you have that flat face. Mm -hmm. And then we need to use this round file to get rid of those threads and make it so it doesn't cut your finger when you put it on. Gotcha. So smooth out the inside, smooth out the outside, and then we've got a few different finishing steps we'll get to as well. Here's the basic idea. We're gonna take a brass hex nut and some files, lathes, saws, and sanders to turn it into a ring that fits perfectly. So we gotta choose which size. This one I think is just entirely too small. Uh, this ring fits me pretty well, so I'm kinda of using it as a guideline, and we'd never get a usable ring out of that for me. This middle one might be able to get that to work. We'll end up with fairly thin walls on it, but mm -hmm. if we can pull that off. I think we can get that it is, to work. That is a lot to sand down. Yeah, but. we're kind of pushing our luck a little, but we'll see. We can uh, always try uh, twice. Brass is a fairly soft metal. If I were trying to do this with steel, that would take a long time. But you can see I'm already getting corners to come down. Great, yeah, that's getting around already. It's not perfect, but I think it's a good start. Okay, I've now taken a file to, I'd say, just about the whole outside of this. I've got it rounded off, except where I'm gonna have the little signet plate on the top. So we've got the general shape I'm going for, and now it's time to try and make it fit my finger. As you can see, I can't really wear this very well, so I have to carve out quite a bit of that inside brass. You got a round file, I'm gonna just put it into the vise and just start carving it out until hopefully I can get it to fit on my finger. All right, now I've got the inside of my ring all hollowed out using the lathe. I'm going to put it on this ring mandrel here and then put it in the jaws of my lathe and I'll use this tungsten carbide lathe cutter to round out the edges. All right, so I've got my ring shape made and I even sanded it to just get rid of any rough edges. And now I need to add bevels to the ring. I think that'll give it a nice, just kind of sharp, professional look. So I'll put it back on the lathe and then I've got these two different angled lathe cutters. You can see that. And I'll use each one to put a bevel on the edges and it should look nice. All right, so I've got the ring ready to switch over to the mill. I'm gonna do a cool kind of pattern around with that. But I'm gonna use the polisher to make it look good on camera first. That's very important. That looks pretty good as it is. All right, so I've got my basic ring shape made. Now I want to mill some notches in it using my mill here. And so I've got a circular ended, it's called a ball mill drill bit right here. So when I turn it on, 
you can see it spins and that'll put a just a mark in it and now I need to clamp onto the ring and then this is a rotary table and I can spin this dial to spin the ring and I can see down to just like tenths of a degree how far it's spinning so it's really accurate and it allows me to uh, just evenly notch all the way around the ring. I'll show you how I do it. Alright, so I've got the first side done. You can see it's got just those nice notches all the way around the radius of the ring. Now I need to flip it over, line it up, and then repeat the process on this side. At this point, I've shaved down so much of this brass that it's pretty thin, and if I put it in the vise to try and really hold it in place as I file down for the taper, I'm worried that I would just crush it because it's a lot softer than it was. So, Patrick, explain what we're gonna do to hold this still. So, hopefully, and this might not work, it might not be able to withstand the force that we need to use to file it, but this is just super glue. We can just pour a ton of it in here. I'm gonna super glue it to the vise here. This is accelerator, it hardens it almost instantly. So that'll cure. And hopefully that'll hold it in place and allow him to file it. And then when we're done, we can use heat from the flame to just kind of ruin the super glue and it'll just pop right off. So the glue is now cured. Let's see if this will hold up to some somewhat aggressive filing. All right, now I've got the design milled into the outside of the ring, and I need to finish up the inside and make it comfortable to wear. So I'm gonna put it in my lathe jaws once again, and I'm going to use this bit here to bevel the inside edge and give it a nice kind of, more of a rounded gradual fit so that it doesn't hurt your finger when you put it on. All right, so he's got a kind of a medium grit sandpaper on this Dremel here and then we'll do some polishing steps after that. Now I am using a rotary tool right now, but technically this is something you can do just with files or sandpaper if you're very patient. All right, I've got my ring taken down to a pretty smooth level all the way around and now I'm gonna start hitting it with some polish. So I've got this little rotary wheel, got some polish here, I'm gonna polish the inside and then I'll take it over to the bigger wheel to polish the outside. See how shiny we can get this. I'm thinking we can just bring it out to a mirror finish all the way around. All right, this signet style ring, it fits my finger nicely. It's you know, shiny inside and out. However, this honestly is a little too gaudy for my taste. A little over it's, the top. Yeah, it just looks like it's supposed to be gold and way too fancy. So I wanted to take this down and make it look like sort of a worn, weathered, beaten up kind of thing. I've got just what you need. Awesome. So. Uh, my ring, I'm going to leave this one shiny, but I prepared a second one that I can do the same thing to. I left the hex nut shape to it just because I think it kind of looks cool. So what we're going to do, we'll each take a turn and we're just going to use the Dremel and we're just going to go to town and we're just going to scratch them up, make it look like it's been through a battle or something like that. And then we'll do some heat treatment to make it look really old. I like it. All right. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, now it's my turn. I'm gonna see if I can compete with what Nate's done, and I think he did a really good job. So, I'm a little nervous. I'm scared you guys aren't gonna like mine, but I'm, I'm gonna do my best, and I hope you like it. All right, so we've got a blowtorch here that's to heat up the rings, and then this is a cup of motor oil. It doesn't really matter what kind you use, just motor oil. So yeah, let's do it. And I'm just going for sort of a, a nice red hot all over. Yep, just wait till it gets red hot and then you'll be ready.
All right, same process we were doing before. However, we found we got a better, grungier, darker result by using used motor oil rather than a new clean synthetic oil. All right, here goes nothing. That looked cool. Look at that. That looks pretty good. Let's wipe it off and see what we've got. Okay, I like this. I like how this turned out. It was several repetitions of heating it up and then putting in the oil. Uh, at one point I actually sanded a lot of the patina off to try and, and sort of remove what had built up. It wasn't dark enough, but I did finally get what I really think looks good. And then I took my, my fairly fine grit file and I just hit some of the edges really lightly to sort of add highlights so you can see the difference. Very happy with how this has turned out. You yep. got some really good darkness in there. Yeah, I was able to get it pretty black and then I just used a little bit of steel wool and just went over the whole thing and just kind of brought out the edges just like how Nate did. Got ourselves some pretty intense looking rings. for some tough dudes, you don't wanna mess with us. Guys, Patrick has his own channel. He makes really cool rings. You should definitely go check him out. Yeah, on my channel, I just make rings out of just random exotic materials. I use like meteorite, carbon fiber, mammoth tooth, you name it. So we just have a lot of fun over there. Thanks so much for having me on the channel. It's always a good time. Guys, the fun doesn't end here. Go ahead and click right there to see our last video and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.